Hey Stampers, I'm Meg from Loven Stamps and I have a Best Birds project to share with you that is part of Stamps in the Mail Club this month. And this one is the kit with all the tiny pieces. There are, I don't know, like 25 little pieces in that fun um, kit for this project. So grab your kit and I will give you instructions for making this fun sampler project. So these sampler frames are everywhere now. They're super trendy. Um, they're really popular. Sometimes you see four, sometimes you see um, 12, sometimes you see a bigger size, but the gist is the same. So the techniques that I'll share with you for this sampler will apply to pretty much any stamp set or any size sampler that you wanna do. Um, I love one of the other things about the sampler and that is the sneak peek of the new in color. So this green here, this really pretty green is lemon lime twist which will come out on June 1st 2017 so if you're watching this video tutorial in May it's almost here lemon lime twist is almost here you can get it as part of the Eastern Palace suite right now in May but anyway um, it'll be here soon and I love the combination with Bermuda Bay and pool party and soft suede so let me give you some tips on assembling this so that you can get your pieces where you want them and also some technique things this is a great stamp set um, for using on a sampler because there's so many interesting little pieces that you can mix and match and do different things with. So let's get stamping. So let's get started by putting our uh, board together. This is a piece of chipboard. It's the backing that comes with the glimmer paper, the Stampin' Up! glimmer paper. And then I have just a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock and I've got fast views on the back of it. So go ahead and glue those together and you, with fast views, you only get one shot, so make sure you place it exactly where you wanted it. And then I have the backing paper too, um, which is going to make the stand for our frame, um, but we're gonna put that on last so that we can keep this flat for where we, um, as we're working on it. All right, so my um, advice is to go ahead and you can kind of lay out your pieces just a little bit vaguely and figure out where they're going to go. Make sure you have all the pieces in the right place. Um, do be careful because one of these very vanilla squares is smaller than the other. I almost got that one wrong. And it needs to go there. The larger one goes on this top corner up here. We're gonna get, let's see, a gold flower, a um, dotted paper there. This is gonna be our lemon lime twist, yay! Another lemon lime twist. We have a long strip here. We have a strip to match it. We have a center piece and then another piece of the acetate. Love this stuff. Um, a flower that goes here. A flower that goes here. A little um, enamel dot, a little banner, and a circle that's gonna go in the center. And then we've got our birds here. One and two from the die cut. Got a piece of burlap ribbon that's gonna go across here and then we have some extra for cutting some pieces. So now that you um, have your, your stuff figured out where it's gonna go, let's go ahead and build each one of the squares and then I'll give you some tricks for assembling them. So this square here is going to get stamped with our um, Bermuda Bay ink and our um, ha cross hatch stamp and I'm not gonna cover the whole thing all right, I forgot to put the mat under there, so I'm glad it's stuck because while it's still stuck on there, I'm just gonna go ahead and mash it a little bit extra from the back side so that I get, there we go, a nice image. Just stamped my countertop also. <laughs> and then this piece is going to go on with a piece of Stampin' Dimensional. I don't remember if this is too big. Oh, looks like it'll fit okay. Okay, so we have a Stampin' Dimensional to go here on the corner. And then I have a um, enamel dot to go on. And the enamel dots may vary in color depending on your kit. So there are a couple of fun colors that all match. Uh, right next, this square isn't going to get anything. This square here needs some stamping. And there is a berry stamp um, in this set that I haven't used so much yet. So I'm going to grab a block for that. And I'm going to use Bermuda Bay again and just stamp some random shapes. I'm gonna turn my stamp as I go, and as I'm stamping randomly, um, I'm thinking in triangles. So one, two, three makes a triangle. When I decide where to put the next image, I go one, two, and then three there to make a triangle. These two need a triangle, so I'm gonna put that there. These two need a third to make a triangle. I'm gonna go there. These two could use a third for a triangle, so I'll go there, and then I'll kind of put one on the very end there, okay? So see how that stamping goes. All right, that's gonna sit here. This square here at the top is going to need a stamped flower. So I have, where'd that black go with my berries? I'll set those aside. 
So I have this image um, here. I'm going to ink this up. Now the trickiest thing about this one is um, getting it lined up again because it's kind of hard to tell which direction um, it should be facing. So I'm going to make sure my cardstock is facing the right direction and then um, I can do it from the top or from the bottom. I'm going to stamp just upside down. So I'm going to lay it on top there and then while it's kind of stuck I'm going to set it down and just press another block on top so that I have a nice um, even pressure for that. Okay, and then I have this little bit here of um, gold foil paper, which is way more than I need. So I'm going to trim down just a little piece of that and make a little banner end. It doesn't honestly matter if the banner end is even. Mine is not at all. <laughs> so I guess if that really bothers you, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put a Stampin' Dimensional on the back of this flower. So this is die cut from that same die cut set and place that here and on our piece of our square there for our artwork. Okay, so there's that finished square. All right, so we got our three across the top. This guy down here needs some burlap ribbon and a little flower and a little watercolor. So this time I'm going to use the flower with a stem on it and I'm gonna stamp this kind of um, off the bottom so the coming off the corner and then I'm going to use my blender pen so this has got a clear um, glycerol water mixture in it it doesn't have any color to it the color all comes from the um, ink that you stamped or you can pick up color from someplace else so I'm going to use that to just color our flowers and then run that out so it's clean for next time and then the burlap ruin and for this one I am going to use my fast fuse to just get this nicely stuck down so I'm going to put that across the front and put my burlap ribbon on it. I love this ribbon and this is going to go right up next to the edge and then this actually mounts on a piece of um, Bermuda Bay cardstock so it's kind of a color on color thing and I'm gonna put some fast views in here. This ribbon is kind of big and strong for all these little pieces so I'm using fast views for things because I want to make sure that the ribbon doesn't pop off the adhesive. Um, it doesn't, it's not really fond of being bent up like this. So a strong adhesive is a really good, um, really good choice. And then our bird, which I will go ahead and stick down and I'm just gonna use some fast fuse across the back of him. If you have little um, webs in there, you can use your fingernail or your snips or something to um, get them out of the way. And so there we have our bird stuck down. And actually on all of these, I probably should just be putting um, a dimensional on the back. I'm not peeling it, I'm just putting the dimensional on the back so that it's ready for our artwork. So the center panel here, pool party cardstock, and then a piece of the um, acetate. I love this stuff. If you didn't see the other card that we made with it earlier, here's another one um, with a different pattern from the acetate. It's so pretty. And if you're not a, a gold fan, you can always flip it to the other side. It's silver on the back. So uh, you have lots of cool flexibility. Our circle is gonna go in the center here. So that means we can take our dimensional, pop it right in the middle and layer this here on our um, colored cardstock. Okay, so we have our, our background set. Now for this, I'm gonna stamp with it. It's a good day, uh, which is kind of, that's a great sentiment to have in your house or whatever, right? So the problem is um, good day fits terrifically and it's a, uh, not so much. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to stamp it twice. You're going to stamp once on your actual circle that you're going to use and once on a piece of scratch paper that's included in your kit. And so I'm going to cut this out. This just it's a and then grab a piece of the Stampin' Dimensional and actually I think I have to trim it just even further. So let's see. I'm gonna cut the points off my dimensionals. And then this goes on the back of our little greeting. And when you peel this off, it can go right here on top of the It's a Good Day. So now we have an It's a Good Day. And this is art, it doesn't have to go in an envelope. So <laughs> I'm just gonna put another dimensional on the back. Why not, right? So there we have our It's a Good Day greeting. All right, so that's going to go in the center. Oh, and I said we we're going to put dimensionals on the back of each one as we go. Um, our gold doesn't need anything, so we'll just put the dimensional on the back of that. Um, this one from the bottom corner is going to need a flower. So again, I have my flower here. This one's a little easier to line up 
this is like the, the beginner lining up part, although I'm still going to do it this way, it's so small. Um, but because it has a direction to it, you don't have to work quite as hard to figure out which side is up on the, as you did on the other flower. So there is our greeting for that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of fast fuse on here and put it on straight and flat. So that's going to be the bottom corner. And then that brings us to, oh, my frame's falling apart. That brings us to this one down here. And for this one, there's a couple pieces. So one, I'm going to take our um, greeting here, our greeting flower, and put a flower down at the corner. I'm going to use that larger flower and put a larger flower down here. And then this stamp actually says happy birthday, but I'm going to use my soft suede ink so that we can get a little more soft suede in here. I'm going to ink up just the word happy so the rest of my stamp is clean. Stamp that on our scratch paper and then trim this out here. So we have a happy. It's a good day. We're happy, right? There we go. Okay, so when you've got that trimmed, you're going to put a, a half strip of um, stamp dimensional in the back, and maybe I'll just take a half a dimensional. Okay, well, two came with. We don't need that one. All right, so I'm going to put a half a dimensional on the back of that. And then that gets stuck here. It's hard to get the backing off on the front. Um, we have this long strip of um, gold foil paper. It looks like it's shiny on the back, but it's not self-adhesive, so you can't just try to peel the backing off and have it stick. So I'm going to go ahead and put snail just right across the back, and the, the excess um, adhesive kind of curls around, so you can just smush that off. And clip that at the end. Okay, and that leaves a spot. I think I needed one more flower up here. I'll add one more. There we go. That leaves us a place to attach our bird. And conveniently, there is this giant spot here with no uh, <laughs> no holes, no dies, no pieces cut in it. So I'm going to use that as my place to put my stamp and dimensional. So there is our final panel. All right, so let's pull this all back here. And then I'm just going to fuss with it until I get all the pieces kind of straight and where I want them. Um, the dimensions for this are cut. Since we have one double block, your um, dimensions are a little bit set. And the each one of these squares is actually uh, one and a half inches. And the gap in between is about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit bigger. So get it all straight. So then one at a time, um, you want to go ahead and pull a piece up, take the dimensional off the back, and go ahead and place that on your art, okay? And I kind of like to work in order so that I can kind of reassess as I'm going, okay? So I'm going to line that up. Okay. And remember, if you have one that's a super disaster, the easiest way to get it off isn't to peel it. You don't want to you don't want to pull it back like this because that'll bend the fibers and you won't recover from that. But what you can do is grab it and just twist around the corner, um, and it'll shear off the dimensional. So just take it off and put a new dimensional on. But no one, you won't have damaged your paper, so no one will know. All right, unless you tell them. Shh, don't tell them. Okay. So then the next thing um, we're going to do is go ahead and grab the back because our frame is great but it doesn't stand up it just stays so if you had a frame you wanted to put it in um, you could use it for that but I'm going to show you how to make a really easy backing this is the backing paper from um, Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper it's a tag board that's not very thick it's just a nice lightweight and um, you can do this folding freehand or you can use your um, scoreboard, your Simply Scored tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up and then you kind of got to eye it a little bit. Or you could use like a straight edge or something to see if you're pretty straight. But what you want to do is you want to line one corner and another corner. And then you're going to use your scoring tool to just go all the way in the diagonal like that. Can you see that? There you go from one top corner to the opposite bottom corner. Okay, so that is going to be the base of our of our frame backing. And I'm gonna fold there on that score line, okay? And then I would tell you how to do this, but I have to show you because I always get it wrong. All right, so basically one face of this is going to be flat against your frame. The other face is gonna stick out to hold your frame in place. And it's going to be square, so top edge, it's six inches the same as your frame. Top edge and bottom edge are lined up straight. 
and then it sits like this. So if you can't figure out, wait, do I do this? If you do this, it'll fall over. So clearly, or it'd sit like at a small angle like that. So clearly that's not right. So instead, um, you're gonna hold your top edges together. So that actually could help you remember too, top edges together. Okay, then I'm gonna take it off and put some um, fast fuse on the back. Tear tape would also work great. So top edges together. I kind of like that. I might remember now how to <laughs> assemble these top edges together. And then you have your frame backing. So you can just snag it like that to lay it down. So there is our finished sample frame. Like I said, you can do these with all kinds of stamps, um, all kinds of colors, all kinds of themes. You could do them for different months of the year. Um, and really, you don't even have to buy a frame for it. They're super inexpensive. Um, as a neat gift because all you need is some fun chipboard. Um, and the stronger your chipboard, uh, the better off your, your art piece will be. You don't want it to sag as it's standing up. But the um, Stamps and Mail Club kits for this month are still available, at least as of right now. So for a couple watercolor tutorial cards and then that fun silhouette card that I showed you, um, lots of neat projects with different tips and so forth and video tutorials are available for all of them. So. Let me know if you would like to request your Stamps and Mail Club kit. It's very simple on my website. If you have questions, you can uh, give me a call, text me, send me an email. I don't know, send a, a carrier pigeon. <laughs> it's a bird project, right? Send a carrier pigeon. That'd be awesome. 